that passage, hallelujah, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives where? Say it with me, in me. And just as God raised Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give you life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit that's where? I want you to know that God placed something in you that is so amazing that causes you to be victorious in everything that you do. And I want you to recognize that it's on the inside of you. I want you to pray with me as we share the grace to win. Say that with me, the grace to win. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all that you do for us. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity we have to lift you up and celebrate you because you are so worthy to be celebrated and to be praised. And we bless you. We honor you. No one can do us like you can. So have your way in the service today, and we give you glory. And in Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. If he's been good to you, take a moment. Just give him another praise. We're blessing him today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. This is our second, second portion of the series talking about grace to win, and I get really excited about this particular subject because it's one of my favorite subjects. Why is it one of my favorite subjects? Because the message of grace changed my life. I had been trying to live life in my own strength. I had been trying to do things with my own might, trying to be saved in my own power. And folks, it just don't work. Can I get a witness? You can try to save yourself, and people tell you, well, I'm running, trying to make 100 because 99 and a half won't do. Truth be known, I never reached 99. I didn't even get close to 100. I'm letting you know that I failed. I fall, I fell short over and over again. It wasn't until someone shared the grace message. What was the grace message? The grace message is this, is that when we could not care for ourselves, when we could not save ourselves, God sent Jesus Christ down to the earth to die for us. I love that scripture in the book of John 3.16. For God helped me out, so love. Sometimes I put my name in there. Because, like I say, I believe he has my name in his wallet, too. My picture in his wallet. Hallelujah. So, therefore, he says, For God so loved Jerry Wayne, you put your name there, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believed on him, you don't have to die and perish, but you can have life, and you can have life, eternal life. And that's a good message. Not that we had to do something, per se, in our own strength or our flesh, but God sent Christ to do the completed work, and that's the grace message. See, people say, well, pastor, tell us about what the, even the word grace means. Some have defined it as the unmerited favor. It's that, but it's more than just that. Grace is the a power of God upon your life to allow and cause you to do what you can't do in your own strength. The very grace of God, charis, it means gift. It means that, you know, we get the word charity from that same Greek word. I want you to know that God has given you everything you need to win. Can I get a witness in the house? Do you believe that? Give him praise in this place. He's God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we talked about the fact that grace is a gift. It's a free gift. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. I want you to know that God has given us the free gift, and we can receive it through faith. That's my, one of my other favorite scriptures in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, and eighth and ninth verse, for by grace we are saved through faith, not of works, least any should boast. And I praise God for that, for it is a gift of God. God gives us what we need in order to be victorious in this world. Can I get a witness? And it's important for us to embrace that, and we receive it by faith. The other issue is that, you know, which is very important for us to know, is that grace is available to everyone. Some people think, well, just certain people can operate in this, certain people can receive this. No, grace is available to all of us, all who will receive by faith. And I believe that some will receive by faith today, no doubt about it. That brings me to my first point. My first point is this. We're here to celebrate today. Not sad, not moaning, not groaning. We are celebrating. Well, what are we celebrating? I'm glad you asked. We celebrate today the greatest win of all times by the greatest winner of all times. I said it's the greatest win of all times, and I like celebrating wins. I like to win, too, to be truthful about it. And I like to be on a winning team. 
So today, again, we celebrate the greatest win of all by the greatest winner of all. Well, the greatest win of all, you know, and people say, how can you say it's the greatest win? And there's been a bunch of it. There's been a bunch of wins, and in fact, truth be known is that we're just coming off of uh, March Madness, and I know some of us checked out March Madness, and some of you all liked, you know, UCLA, and some didn't. Some liked Southern, you know, uh, South Carolina, and some didn't. And, but we had some good games. And uh, March Madness is over, and the winner is the winner. Thank God for them. Some like the Masters, and I'm not talking much about them. Some like the Masters, and that was a golf thing, and it was good. And um, uh, uh, th yesterday was what? First day of the playoffs. I'm so glad that some of you all remember. And I happen to be a person that likes basketball. You know, you can tell by my physique and so forth and so on. You know, I like to play above the rim. <coughs> I didn't say what height. Hallelujah. But I, I, I like basketball, and I've been watching the, the triple-double chase because there's one individual that, that just blesses me, and his name is uh, uh, Russell Westbrook. I'm checking him out, and, and Russell's been getting down. He is not, quote-unquote, a superstar like, you know, uh, Stephen Curry, because Stephen Curry, he's got some, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. And uh, you got Kobe. On, but but they're, all those are good, but none of them have the stats that Russell has. You know, just, just be truthful about it. And I know that some people will talk to me after church, but that's all right, that's all right. And, uh, but the thing is, is that <laughs> God has done something on the inside of him. And, and I'm going to talk about that, but here's, here's my, my, my point. We celebrate people that do things, but you've got to recognize there's someone working in them to cause them to do what they do. Hallelujah. Look at this next verse. This next verse, you've got to go to it. Because this is in, in, in the passage of, um, of Romans 8 and 11. You know, because this scripture says that God raised Jesus to life. And I'm going to get back to Russell, so don't, don't let me forget that. Um, God raised Jesus to life. Jesus didn't do this by himself. The, script, the Bible says that God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. So if the power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then that means that you've got some power to get up too. Some people think that, that, that Resurrection Sunday is all about what Christ did, did, and it is because he got up. But not only did he get up, but you got up. It's because sometimes we'll say, well, let me tell you the story uh, about what happened. And thank God for how he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace being poured upon him and by his stripes we're healed. Thank God for that. Thank God that he was bruised and he took 39 stripes on our behalf. Thank God for that. But I thank God more than anything because that took place on a Friday. It was a good Friday. And then he went to the grave and we could, he could have came off the cross. The Bible says that the nails didn't hold him up there, but the love that he had for you and I kept him on the cross. He bled and died from the sixth to the ninth hour, 72 thorns, the crown of 72 being upon his head. But he hung there. And then, you know, he, he, then he had the power to come down, but he didn't. Why? Because because of you, because of me, and I give him glory. I give him praise. I honor him. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. And no doubt they put him in the tomb and expected him to stay there and tried to seal it, but when, but, but when the grace of God is on your life, can't, can't no grave hold your body down. <laughs> Can't nobody hold you down. I don't care what they're saying, what they're talking. You know, when God is on your life, he's got the power to raise you up from your dead situation. Somebody give God glory in this place. Thank you, Jesus. But here's my point that I've got to focus on. Many of us think that, oh, and I, I've never taught this before in the 24 years. We think that Jesus got up by himself. Oh. And it was quiet, just like this in the early service. <laughs> Is it what Jesus did it by himself? No, the scripture says, what happened? God who did what? So Jesus had some help getting up. Oh, it's getting quiet in the house. I said, I don't know if I'm going to say amen to that. Well, we're going to take you to another scripture. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go to Ephesians 2 and 6. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Y'all still with me, right? 
Because a lot of people say, well, that was Jesus, bless God. That ain't me. That was Jesus. I don't have no power. The Bible says the same spirit that raised him is on the inside of you. So instead of us simply celebrating his resurrection, we've got to celebrate our resurrection as well. Because if he got up, there's something on the inside of us that's going to help us get up. Are you with me? There's so much that resides on the inside. And when we recognize what it is that it is down here, that we'll walk in power, we'll walk in strength, and that winner spirit will be upon us. Are you with me today? Here it is. It says, for he, talking about God, raised us from the dead along with Christ. In other words, he's raising him and seated him and seated us with him in heavenly places and realms because we are what? United. Paul said it like this. He says, he says I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. In other words, when Christ died, I died in him. When Christ was buried, I was buried in him. And when Christ got up on the third day, I got up with him. Are you with me today? We are resurrected with Christ. Are, are you with me today? Somebody give him praise in the house. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, give him real praise. Thank you, God. Bless him real big. <laughs> I get excited about this because it just blessed me to, 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 to remind me that God raised Jesus from the dead. God raised him. The Spirit of God raised him. And it says that same Spirit that raised him is on the inside of me. Let me let you know that just like Jesus is a winner, we're winners as well. Are you with me today? Thank you, God. Now, let's talk about this. God raised Jesus to life. That's my next point. I want you to write it down. Some of you may be even checking it out on the website. You can check it out there too. God raised Jesus to life. Well, well, well what does that mean? That means that there was a power on the inside of Jesus that caused him to get up. That was the power of God, the grace of God, the anointing, the power of God to do what God called him to do. And whenever God calls you to do something, he gives you everything you need in order to be successful doing it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you all need to hear that because you've been, you know, bombarded with some stuff and you don't see how it's going to happen. You don't see how it's going to turn around. But, 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 but let me let you know that you have some help. And, and, and that, that brings me back to Russ. And you say, Pastor, how, why are you talking about him? Because I was just checking him out when he shot that last buzzer beater when he had 50 points. 50 points, man, to, to, to finish out 42 uh, triple doubles. Somebody said, where's the triple double? Triple double is either 10 points. <laughs> 10 rebounds, 10 assists, all, and most people don't get one. And he has 42? And when they put the mic in his face at the end of the game, I couldn't wait to hear what he was going to say. They had a mic. Give, give, give me a mic. Grab one of the mic. And, 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 and they, they, they put it in his face, and they said, they said, Russell, how, what do you attribute to coming out night after night, putting up these type of numbers. You know, because it's unreal. 50 points, 13 rebounds, 15 assists. It's unreal. What do you attribute? And, and I was just hoping that he was going to give God some glory. And uh, he stepped out. He said, uh, I want you to know that I want to I thank God for blessing me to come out every night and to lay it all out for him he says, I've been blessed to play the game I love. I was like saying, preach, boy, preach. <laughs> he said, he said it, it, it's only, you know, because, you know, I've been given this, this blessing. He began to talk about God. I was like saying, wow. And at the end of it, you know, I was, I was so excited. I was like up in the, in the I was, man, I was, I was like, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the commentator at the end of it, the, the, some of the same people that gave him the mic and was wanting to say how much he practiced and all this stuff. They said, well, yeah, we asked Russell what he did to, to be able to put up these type of numbers. And Russ said he, he just simply played the bless card, played the I'm blessed card. Yeah, well, you know how. And I said, well, he played the bless card. You know, I'm saying thank you, Russ, for pulling out the trump. I'm saying, bow. I'm letting you know, man. This ain't my strength. I didn't give myself these muscles. I didn't able to jump like this on my own. I didn't open the door for me. I'm blessed. God gave this to me. I want you to know, just as Russ played the blessed card, we need to play the blessed card as well. Somebody give God some praise in this house. I'm not standing up here in my own strength. I'm not lifting my hands in my own strength. 
Some of you all, when you look at your jobs, you can't, you better not say I'm so smart. <laughs> Some of you all gonna be graduating soon. Don't you dare get there. Well, bless God, my IQ, my intellect. You better say thank you. Because who gave you the IQ? Who blessed you to get up? Who, who gave you the strength in your limbs? Everything you have is only because God gave it to you. Everything that you've ever done is only because God opened the door. It's only because he made a way. Somebody give God praise for his blessings and his grace upon your life. You ought to play the blessed card. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and I know even some of you all got up this morning. You know, you had your new, new outfit on. And you looked in the mirror, you said, oh, God, oh. <laughs> I look good today. <laughs> but it's only because God blessed you with the new outfit and the perm or whatever, whatever he gave you. You need to say, Father, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Listen, folks, I want to play the blessed card on a regular basis. I want to tell God, thank you, God, for giving me the opportunity to wake up and to share the gospel message with all of you. Thank you, God, for a lovely wife. Thank you for my children, my grandchildren. Thank you, God, for all that. Thank you for health, my strength. It's only because you bless me with grace to win. Somebody give God praise in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it's not because of me. Too many people begin to pat themselves on the back. It's all about me, bless God. But man, if it hadn't been for the Lord on my side, man, where would I be? Now, let me take you to this next passage because you've got to grasp this. You've got to grasp this because it's important. You know, this is my third point. When God raised Jesus, God raised you a winner with Jesus. <laughs> When God raised Jesus, got to grasp it, God raised you. Say, God raised me. If God caused Jesus to get up with all power in his hand, guess what? God raised you with Jesus. And since Jesus is a winner, that means that you are a winner too because you are in him. <laughs> You're in him and he's on the inside of you. I would be so happy and thankful when the people of God begin to walk like winners. We begin to talk like winners. We begin to lay hands on the sick. And, and, and I'm so tired of people talking about, well, the devil, the devil, putting a B in it. It should be devil. The devil always, no, I'm not. The devil is defeated. Can I get a witness? The devil is defeated. Jesus kicked his behind and got up with all power. Are you with me today? I love this passage, in the, in, 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 I think it's, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. I love this passage because, and I, I, I quote it on occasions, it talks about, and they're going to pop it up there, it says, death is swallowed up in the grave. Then it says, oh death, where's your sting? It's like, like, like it's a boasting. Death, you're supposed to be bad. I thought you can't hold me down. Grave, where's your victory? You can, do you hear what I'm saying? This, this, there's a boldness about what Christ did. Are you with me today? He says, I thought you could hold me down. You couldn't hold me down. Nah, 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 nah. I'm telling you, this passage is bad. Go to the sixth verse. The next verse, it says, and, sting, and the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The sin used to hold us because thou shalt not, but now a greater than the law came. Jesus Christ came, and he is the fulfillment of the law. The law can no longer keep us down and make us feel guilty about the things. We can just go to him and say, God, I know I messed up, but thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I can walk in victory. I can walk in healing, and I bless you, God. I don't have to hide, cover up any longer. Thank you, Jesus, for sending Jesus Christ, and thank you, Jesus, for kicking the devils behind. Give God praise in this place. Woo! And I done preached myself happy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So therefore, when God raised Jesus, God raised you a winner with Jesus. Say it with me. I'm a winner. Now say it like you mean it. I don't want us ever walking in failure or walking like chumps and punks and wimps. And I, I did say chumps and punks. But God wants us to walk in power. Why? Because we recognize who's on the inside of us. And winners attract winners. I think for too long that we have portrayed Christianity as a weak, as a weak relationship. And, and it's not. 
You know, we're talking about people that stand strong and stand in power and in the anointing of God, doing the will of God, seeing the hand of God move in our lives. Are you with me today? We ought to be like David. When David saw the giant, you know, he didn't run away, but he ran toward him. This is an opportunity for God to be God because I'm doing God's will. We're doing God's will on the earth. We're not doing it in our strength. And guess who backs up? If he raised God from the dead, if he raised Jesus from the dead, he'll raise you out of your situation as well. Somebody give him praise because he is God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm all right, I'm all right. Thank you, Jesus. But when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, man, it makes me want to shout, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So when God raised Jesus, God raised you a winner. Say it with me one more time. I'm a winner. Let me share this with you. Too often times, those that have messed up and make mistakes, and we do, it's most of the time it's because we embrace human effort. We embrace trying to do things on our own strength. And some of us are wore out right now because we're trying to do it in human effort. Religion is human effort trying to satisfy and please God. Your human effort can't satisfy or please God. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can satisfy and please. So why don't we accept it? You know, I, I love that passage. And uh, I didn't ask them to put it down, but I really like the passages in the book of Galatians 2 and 20 it says this I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ lives in me in the life which I live in the flesh I'm on the earth I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me 21st verse I do not frustrate the grace of God you mean to tell me we can frustrate the grace of God by trying to do it in our own strength you mean to tell me we can frustrate the grace of God by trying to raise our children in our own strength we can frustrate the grace of God by trying to live holy in our own strength. Are you all with me today? I can frustrate the word of God and the very grace of God by trying to preach in my own strength. What would happen if the church of God would begin to depend upon the grace of God in every aspect of our lives? When we go in for a job, I'm not going in because I'm so qualified or because I'm so smart. But Father, thank you that your grace is upon me and your grace is sufficient when all other things fail. Somebody give God praise in this place. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then I like this, the, 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 the latter part of that passage. It says, for I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ died in vain. We know Christ didn't, didn't die in vain, and therefore righteousness cannot come by the law, but it comes by grace and truth, and that comes through Jesus Christ. And I praise God, and I honor him for that. So just remember this week, I want you walking in, in total victory total power, the authority, because the same thing that's on the inside of you that raised Jesus from the dead, it's on the inside of you. Sometimes look in the mirror, you know, say, hey, Father, thank you, God, that you placed something inside of me that made me totally victorious. Are you with me today? Somebody give him praise in this place. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo! <clears throat> Hallelujah. My next point is this. Regardless of the challenge, you have the grace to win. I don't care what you're going through. And some say, Pastor, well, you don't know my story. You don't know my situation. You don't know what I've been in, in the midst of. You don't know um, what happened to me when I was a child, or I was, this happened, or that happened. I don't care what challenge. Regardless of the challenge that you faced, you have the grace to win. Truth be known is that the, 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 the tougher you've had it, the more opportunity you give God to say, God, you know, I can't fix this. Any of you all ever been in that place? <laughs> I can't fix this, God. I'm going to need you for real. I need you to show up. So regardless of your situation, I talked to a young man not that long ago, and he was letting me know that, that he had some challenging times in life, that they tried to abort him, but uh, uh, it didn't work. And, and while they was aborting him, they tried, thought he was dead, but he wasn't dead. He lived, and they couldn't go back and redo it. So he's here. But he says, you know, the, my, the parents didn't want me. But I say, ah, regardless of all that, you are here, and God wants to use your life, and it's just the grace of God that you are here, and he's going to use you as a testimony. Are you with me today? I don't care what you've been through, what you've gone through. You know, if God be for you, who can be against you? If God is for you, I don't care. Man, other stuff can't hold me down. Thank you, Jesus. Can't hold me down. 
think about your life. Think about the things that have happened in your life. And many of you all have experienced the grace of God and are still experiencing God's grace. Many of you have dreams and visions, and that's good, aspirations. But know that you can't do it in your own power or you will wear yourself out. But if Jesus himself depended upon God's power to raise him, how much more do we have to depend upon God's power to raise us? Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to give you this last point. I pray... Actually, it's my last, uh, this last scripture. <laughs> it's in the book of Romans, 8th chapter, 37th verse. It says this. First of all, let me give you the back, backdrop, if I can. This is the writer, Paul, and he's writing to the church of, of the Romans, and he's sharing something with them. He says, I've been through some stuff. Been beaten misused and all kind of stuff falsely imprisoned whipped all these things have happened he says yet you know in all these things we are more than what conquerors. not just conquerors but what sure. not just barely getting by but we are what sure. I don't know about you but something is stirring on the inside of me I like to be around supernatural winners. I like to be around people that know that they're more than a conqueror. Regardless of what you've been through, who lied on you, who talked about you, how they tried to abort you, it makes no difference why they tried to X you out and say that you're just another statistic. But I am not just a statistic. I am a child of God, and the same spirit is on the inside of me that was inside of Jesus that raised him from the dead. And I don't care what it looks like, I'm walking in victory. I might be down right now, but I'm not staying down because God is with me. Somebody give him a praise in the house. Woo! I think of, uh, <laughs> I think of my, my big mama. And you say, I know you just didn't say your big mama. Yeah, I do, my big mama. My grandmother, and she's, she's special and near and dear to my heart. You know, in fact, she raised uh, nine children, nine or ten children by herself because, you know, that's just the situation. And so I don't want you to think that, you know, you're by yourself. But she raised those children, my dad being one of them. She was a tough woman. She could, she could beat most men up. You know, I'm just saying. She was that tough. She, 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 she man, you could get out of her way. And um, uh, I remember when I hung around her, she would, you know, sometimes dip snuff. I might get in trouble. Dad might talk to me later on. But uh, that's his mom. Uh, but I ain't talking about your mom, Dad. I love her. Uh, so I make sure I make it right. Uh, at any rate, her favorite show, she would watch a bunch of soap operas. She would like All Star Wrestling, and uh, All Star Wrestling was her show because you know she wasn't just the punk. She was she she'd get down get right down mix it up with everybody else. And uh, I'd come in, and the kids would come in. We'd come in, and we'd be making noise. She said, "Shut up! Sit down! You notice this? No, I'm watching All Star Wrestling." I was like, And then, you know, we would know because we already knew kind of what was going to be taking place in her. You know, she liked people, stars like Billy, uh, uh, what, what was the boy's name? Uh, Dirty Dusty Rose and, and all those other superstar Billy Graham. That's the one she really liked. And, uh, man, she would get into it. So some people, and they just get into that stuff. And I didn't understand it totally. But she would be into it, and, and she would be saying, like, hit him back. Hit him. Don't let him do you like that. Get up. Get up. Shouting at the TV. And uh, a little further on, I would be saying, like, uh, I would be saying, Grant, 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 but big, big, big mama, that, 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 shut up. <laughs> shut up, don't say nothing. And then she'd be like, get up, get up. And then by that time, they'd throw him on the ground, and he would be stomp on him, jump on him. They, you know how they do they stomp it, the other foot and stomp this foot. And, <laughs> and then he'd jump on him, fell on him with forearm. He said, get up, boy, get up, you dummy, get up. <laughs> About that time, the guy would get a little more energy, and then he'd Nail him again, and, and then finally the, the official comes over and says, one, his hands both sh on his shoulders down, two, and I know what's going to happen. But by the force, he gets ready to hit three, he sticks his arm up. <sighs> <sighs> then, then he puts him down again, he begins to count again, and then finally something happens miraculously. <laughs> he begins to get strength. 
He says, yeah, get him, boy, get him. He jumps up. He gets power from I don't know where. Throws him against the ropes. Slams him, body slams him, stomps him, and then gets up. She's up now. She's standing up, cheering, cheering, cheering. And we're on the background saying, Big Mama. It's a fixed fight. It's a fixed fight. We know what's going to happen already. Shut up. <laughs> but can I let you know, my friends, that the fight you in is a fixed fight? You might not know, but God has already declared you a winner. You might be down, but you're not up. You're not out. Get up. Don't let the devil hold you down. You are a winner. Fight the good fight of faith. Somebody give God praise in this house. Stand on your feet as we give him glory. Bless him in this place. Let's bless him real big. Do me a favor. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm a winner. I've got the grace to win. Do you really believe that? Give him a shout all over the house. 